Hello, and welcome to my very first tutorial. Uh, this one, I decided, you know, I would need to show some people how to pixelate. After all, I've been doing a lot of uh, videos on pixelation, and people can see me do it, but how do you pixelate like me? Well, here I am to show you how to pixelate. <laughs> now, what we are going to do today is first we're going to start with the sketch level. The sketch is very important. You see, uh, it is so that all of your proportions are correct to the point where it gets to pixelation. Now, of course, this is much more detailed than the pixelated uh, level of it. As you can see, there's more uh, detail in the art, sure, but by the time that you get to pixelation, these details are still important because if you do not draw them, you could lose them. So it is better to over detail than to under detail and you can always reference the original piece in order to find things that you may have missed. Today, we are going to use this character. We are going to work on a keyframe. Now, keyframes in animated pixel art are the frames that have that have the most power in them. See, like here is a keyframe of her swinging and we have the other keyframe of her preparing to swing and uh, today we will be working on a keyframe of her getting hit uh, so you see with keyframes like there's obviously going to be a frame between them but these are the ones that are most important to get uh, properly fully drawn out because the uh, mid frames will be more blur and more motion but we are going to do a piece on her getting hit we we are going to give her uh, damage you see on the battle sheet in the game she is a bad guy she is a enemy character so the players are going to be hitting her a lot so we have to work on the hit animation now it's important that when you are drawing a sideways hit that you use a crescendo uh, the crescendo is like the pointy end of an arrow without the stock uh, the bend of the body gives the hit more power and shows you that this person is really taking a hit. Um, I will be sketching out the uh, the pose. I will not do it in real time. I will save you that. So uh, speed up here. But I'll still talk about it. Now, as I was saying, it is very important that all the details are still drawn out so that when you finally get to the pixelation phase, you have all of the information already available so that you don't lose any. Uh, the sketching is, is what usually takes maybe about uh, half of the time, actually. Uh, to fully sketch out a character, for me, takes about as long as it does to then pixelate it. So, it is a two-part process, yes, but I want to make sure that everything is collected. And if you want to pixelate the way that I do, then this is probably the best way. Uh, let's see, I have the pose very loose and conjointed and the character has completely lost her balance and that is entirely on purpose she is getting hit 
and getting hit hard. So there is deformation going on. There is stretching going on. Uh, her chest area is getting, uh, you know, twisted. Or not chest, her stomach is getting twisted and impacted and warped. And the lamellar leather, the armor that she is wearing on her chest is going to get folded up and you will see that. The only thing that does not get uh, very uh, deformed are going to be her boots because they are made of metal and the shield and sword are going to stay the same size uh, because they are metal. They are the objects in her hands, yes. Uh, but her tail and her entire body need to show the motion. The When a character takes a heavy hit, they do not simply just uh, back up or, or uh, you know, t they don't keep their footing in a hit this hard, right? So she is off of her feet. Her tail is moving in the direction of the attacker because it is such a forceful blow. Uh, another keyframe after this could be her on the ground uh, with her equipment and then needing to collect herself. It's optional. I don't know if I'll be going uh, all the way with that route, uh, but it does seem likely that is where she'll end up uh, with how hard she is getting hit. Uh, one of the main characters that you get to play as in the game is a martial artist, so throwing people heavily is not not only um, not unheard of, but it also is more cinematic than just somebody getting hit and going, oof, you know, oof, I have been hit, oh, what was that? Anyway, when I am sketching, I always draw the body out completely before I put any of the armor on. Uh, this is a normal art technique, you know, always draw the nude frame first before you add clothes. That way, you know that there is body underneath. You know, this, uh, but that I am sure is much better explained by other artists who would uh, show you in more detail the ways to sketch fantasy characters and poses for them. But with my sketches, I always ensure that both the body and the armor are two different colors. Because, and you will see why when we get to the sketching or the pixel stage that it helps me to define the difference uh, at the pixel level. Uh, let's see, what else? Ah, yes, so here we have me putting on the clothing. I make sure that her loincloth shows the sense of movement of her getting thrown so bodily by the hit. And I try to ensure that her shield is the proper size and her boots are the right size and I fix any anatomy errors that I may have had along the way, like the one leg being much too long. And then I erase the uh, nude frame underneath that you won't be able to see. And then uh, with the layers copied, I will combine them. And then I will copy the layer itself and create a new image. With that new image, I will save it as a PNG. Um, let's see, let's call it Forest Icarian Raider Hit. Yes. And then I will close Psy. I like Psy, but it is not great for doing the actual pixel level. And I will open GIMP. GIMP 2, I find, is very good for the pixelation, and I can animate with it. It is a little clunky in animation, but yes, I can animate with it. So, first I have to make sure that 
my resizing is the same as the resizing that I use for the other pictures of the same character. Uh, I took the liberty of already ensuring that I know how big this character needs to be, and so I am able to appropriately resize her. Uh, first, I will open one of the other images of her and copy her palette. The palette, very important to keep the same, just as with the size. It is also important, you see me here, I am changing my pencil settings to the appropriate pixel pencil. Now, when we finally get back to the sketch that I made, I will resize it to the level that I already know is appropriate for this character. I will make sure that the interlopation is cubic and uh, I will adjust the percentage for her. It is 15%. Uh, it will automatically adjust it to have the appropriate amount of pixels or nearest pixel and there we go. We have her resized into the uh, pose. Now I like a little bit of canvas room to scroll around, so I always resize it to 100 by 100 and center it and make sure all the layers resize with it. Now, once I have all the resizing done, I will start a new layer. <clears throat> I will start a new layer. There we go. And this is the line layer. Now, the reason that I use the line layer is so that I can more easily discern between uh, the art and where it needs to go. Uh, the blank black lines make it easy to see just how something will look as pixel art before we finish making it uh, into colored pixel art. This helps me, at least, uh, ensure that everything comes out. Anyway, uh, let's get into time lapse. You know, I don't want to uh, bore everybody to death, right? All right, let's speed things up, start moving along, and then I can uh, bring it back out of time lapse when I get to coloring, uh, so I can uh, better explain coloring. Uh, when I am doing these lines, uh, in order to improve my accuracy and make sure that everything is a lot quicker, I will often hold down shift and do a lot of line clicking. Because, you know, when you hold down shift, it will make a straight line from where you start to where you click. Uh, here I am lining out her lamellar armor, I am putting the skull in there, I've got her legs and her uh, loincloth, the little line, uh, a little bit of confusion was going on here uh, between the loincloth and the pants, I had to uh, reference the other picture uh, to make sure that I was executing the uh, loincloth at the proper location. Now we've got her boots, the intricate boots, and her tail coming out and around behind everything. Um, let's see, then we have the shield, which I do not do it the right size the first time. I correct this during coloring, as you will see in a little while. Uh, let's see, so now we get back into coloring. Uh, in order to properly color her, I bring up her palette uh, from the other image. Uh, the very left side I have the eyes, uh, which don't come into play during this. And then I have her scale colors, her fur colors, her leather, her skull, and then her armor, or the metal. And the same color is for the metal of the sword. Uh, overall, uh, the way that I do colors is that the top color is going to be the brightest, and it's going to be like for highlights. Uh, the color just below that is what I call the base color. Uh, the base color 
is usually what I will select first and depending on how bright it is uh, depends on uh, the values for the next colors now in GIMP instead of using just like a color wheel I will use the value uh, the value bar which if you look down in the bottom bottom right uh, you will see the um, color options down there which has hue saturation value and then red green blue right uh, in or from the base I will usually just turn the value down uh, between 10 and 10 and 20 points uh, 5 to 20 points depending on the color uh, for the next uh, color uh, shade the three shades below the base so base shadow darker and then the line so there are two levels of shade and then the line so let's say that with her scale color it is a lighter color so when the value goes down it only goes down between 10 and 15 points uh, and that's with the value bar and it continues with the same reduction uh, for the next level and then the next level which is the lines and for the highlight it goes up the same amount in value so let's say we want to decrease the starting value would probably be around 70 uh, we can reduce about 12 each time so it goes 58 46 34 and you know as it is that right yes that's right anyway as it goes down of course it gets darker as you can see and the darkest is the outline uh, as you can see compared to her furs and her leather and her armor the lines are not as dark uh, her scales have the lightest line art of the four except the skull but the skull does not take up that much of the image uh, in non-natural objects it is usually better to use a darker line uh, this will separate them from organics because uh, organic material usually has a more uh, lively uh, or a yeah more of a lively breath to it whereas with metal it is uh, cold hard unchanging so with the metal even though its starting value is around 80 uh, each shade down reduces it by 20 so you know it'll go 80 60 40 20 instead of the slower reduction of the uh, leather which is a 15 uh, 15 maybe 18 is because it is still an organic material but it is not alive so it'll still have a darker edge uh, this will help you separate the appearance of the armor on the characters and this also makes it a lot clearer as to what they are wearing uh, this contrast this sense of contrast uh, not only improves the visual experience of the character themselves uh, but it also allows for greater clarity for the player all right so let's go into time lapse now as I start to explain shading now with the two layers of shading the uh, first level of shading uh, this lighter shade of shade is mostly used for any of the uh, darker areas that would normally be shaded in a regular picture so you would use this like your cell shading shading yeah uh, with the base color 
and the uh, lighter layer of shading, uh, you'll basically uh, color the picture like you would a normal picture that you would self shade. The lighter color, the highlight, of course used for uh, either regular highlights like on scales or as rim lighting uh, for different things like the leather of what I did there. Uh, the darker level of shading is usually best for when two line arts that are of a similar darkness intersect. Uh, this makes it a lot easier to uh, discern which item is which and it is uh, most prevalent in this image with the lamellar leather where I use the uh, darker shade as lines for some of the lamellar, whereas the line art itself intersects for the uh, underside. The shades that I use for the uh, skull over here are lighter because, you know, as an organic object, so I, you know, use the shades in order to suggest the complexity of the object rather than trying to include everything that the object would show. Uh, since at this level, uh, with pixel art, you more have to uh, suggest the complexity of objects, like I do with the hand as well. Now, uh, any objects that are farther, like more in the background, you will definitely be using more shadow than base color, but all of the uh, foreground objects, like her right arm and right leg, will be mostly base color. Uh, you will see here, as I shade the uh, far leg, that it has a lot more shadow than base color. Uh, compare that to the right leg, which is mostly base color, much less shadow. Then, with the inorganic and unchanging metal boots, they're mostly made up of base, of rim lighting, and of shadows that will allow you to better suggest the shape of the object. I use the lighter or I use the darker shadow as a lighter line art uh, in order to show that there are the overlapping plates while I use the shade and the base in order to, like I said, suggest the shape of each plate. And the result is, look, metal boots! Uh, the shield uh, here is where I fix the size. I use the uh, shift click, uh, which gives you information at the bottom as to how many pixels you are using, in order to size up the shield in the other image. Uh, since it is not being held at the same angle as in the other image, it does not need to have the same width, just the same height. Uh, since, you know, a round object, it will, or a um, flat round object as with this. It will change its uh, dimensions depending on which direction it is being held. Uh, let's see, so here I do the inside lighting or inside shading mostly with the two shadow layers. Now we have our Forest Icarian Raider getting hit. Uh, this keyframe will then be put into the battle sheet and I will figure out oh, where else I will go with the keyframe. Um, and as I talk about that, here I am fixing the length of her forearm, which I thought was a little bit long. Um, after this, I save it and it will, of course, be used in the future, as I was saying. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial, and I hope it helped you at least, maybe a little bit. Uh, if you have any questions, please ask me in the comments. If there's anything that you would like 
either cleared up or you would like a different tutorial on, let me know and we will see. Anyway, I have been playing with a new uh, microphone jack. So I hope it worked out. I know there was a lot of feedback issues and I had to record the narration a couple of times. So, um, you know, let me know if there's anything you know of that could help with the feedback. Anyway, uh, I will be posting pixelation videos still. Uh, like this if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see more, and you know how YouTube works by now. Goodbye.